Good morning or good day to everyone. Today, I will be painting the boat on the seashore and this is the reverse photo that I am going to do. I will explain first the process or my plan in doing this painting. How would I achieve also like um, the sand texture on the watercolor paper? We will do all of that. Okay, so let's plan the painting first and then after that, I will run through the materials and I will proceed on the tutorial itself. Okay, so this one first. All right, so if this reference photo is from Unsplash, that is where you can get royalty free photos in high quality that you could use for painting for personal note and commercial use. So you can check the link below in the description box to get this uh, reference photo. Aside from that, I provided an outline for those who do not draw, okay? So I provided an outline. If you want to draw freehand, you can also do that. That's also good. Okay, so let's start first in planning the painting. So first would be, the first wash would be the sky above. Okay, so the sky above is in blue. I will create, I will be creating this in on wet on wet technique and then lifting some colors using the brush. You could also use tissue to create clouds as you can see there. Next, I will, while the painting here is drying on the top for the sky, next to that I will do will be the sand. So I will be painting the sand so that we can we do not mix the colors and do not mess it up. We do not disturb each other. It won't and it won't bleed the colors for the sky and the sand. So I will be using. I will be painting the sand next on wet on wet as well. Once it dry, I will let it dry. I will paint the sea. Okay, so the the sea here on wet on wet as well. I will be also doing some dry brush technique on the on the sea. Once it's dry. I can paint, I will paint the boat. And then after the boat, I will be adding some texture on the water and on the sand as well. So that's how I will be planning the painting. I will put this aside first. Okay, so I will go through the materials that I have here. Okay, so for this tutorial, you could use you could use a uh, watercolor paper that is loose, and you can tape it on a sh on a art board if you if you would like to. You could use any any size that you prefer, but for this tutorial, I will make it big so that everyone can see it even after my even um in, even on the camera because I cannot zoom it. Okay, so I provided this outline. You can check on the description box to download this. Okay. For this is for those who cannot draw or having a hard time drawing or you want to fast track your drawing. I will be also using Bao Hong Academy watercolor block. This is cold press paper. This is 300 GSM and 100% cotton. So there. You can, if you want to like, if you are starting a, in watercolor journey, you could try this block. I recommend this. Okay, so this is the block. I already have my drawing here. Okay, but I'll show you how you can transfer the drawing later on. Also, for this tutorial, I will be using a flat brush. This is from art secret 30 millimeters wide all right there you go this is a good brush okay i will be also using a big round brush a, med 
this is size this is round brush size 12 i have size thick and size 2 okay so these are the round brushes that i will be using you could use any round brush that you prefer i have here my rug with me so i can i can also dip my or i can remove excess paint on my rug instead of using some tissue paper or paper towel so these are my brushes i will be using for the paints i will be using daniel smith essential set i will be pre-wetting the paints as well so i have here also two small cups of water so i have here two jar two small cups so one is for the dirty washes and one will remain clean especially if we are going to do wet on wet on this on this painting so i have here a pipette to pre-wet my paints so i will be using new gamboge french ultramarine phthalo um blue green shade and pyro scarlet those are the only colors that i will use on this painting so i will be only using four colors there okay if you have like um if you have yellow ochre you can also use that for the sand but i don't so i will make i will mix my own okay also for mixing i will use so uh, this is a ceramic plate this is where i am mixing my colors because it's easy for me to mix colors here than using a plastic or tin okay remember that tin can rust over time also for drawing i am using um, my pencil this is a 4 h pencil because it's easy to remove the excel of uh, the graphite and also i am using a kneaded eraser i use a kneaded eraser because it's easy to remove the graphite and it won't ruin your your paper if you are planning to sell your painting or to give it as a gift or display it it's better if you use a kneaded eraser because if there are any erasures on your paper it can ruin your paper it will be hard to paint on them and even if the paint is dry it can still see okay where are your erasure so use a very light pencil like 3h or 4h pencils h on the pencil means hard it means that um it means that the if the, the pencil the light is hard and it won't smudge on your paper if you use b pencil it can Mm, it's uses for more sleep portraits and it can smudge on your paper so i recommend 3h to 4h so it will be easy for you to remove the graphite okay uh, let's move to the transferring of the drawing to your paper okay so i have here a paper block I, yeah i use a paper block and it's easy for me to use a paper block if we do not use a paper block and lose a sheet, what you can do is to tape your paper on a drawing board like this. You can, or if you have a wood drawing board, it's also better. But any size of the any size of paper, you can do that. If you're going to transfer the drawing, most of the time I use a light pad. And iPad is easy and it will give you a clean, clean transfer of your paint, of your drawing to your paper. But if not, if you don't have any drawing board or light pad, what you can do is to um, draw um, heart using, using a B pencil or you could use like your child or child's pencil this is my son's pencil that he uses in school it is dark so what i did is i draw or i i put some graphite there and then put it on my paper make sure you tape your paper and then you can trace them okay i did it i did the transfer 
earlier before the before this session so it will be easy for it will be easy and faster than what i what i did on the previous tutorial so i already have my drawing here so it's very light i removed some excess graphite okay using the needed eraser okay so let's start the first wash okay before that let's mix the colors first i will be mixing um french ultramarine for the sky and i will be also mixing some colors for the sand as well okay so i will already pre-wet my paint so i'm using french ultramarine we do wet on wet technique so it will easy to to blend the colors on the paper it will also give you a very nice very nice transition of the colors and smooth texture on the of the colors. There you go. Okay, by the way, the French ultramarine, I use that for the sea. I will use phthalo blue for the sky. You could use like cerulean blue for the sky like that. It's also same color, I guess. It's very similar. For Windsor Newton, I love the Windsor blue. You could use any cool blue that you have in your palette. Okay, I will use the same color for the boat for the Halo blue. For the sand, I am using this new Gamboge. If you have yellow ochre, you could use that. I don't have, so I will mix. If you don't have the same colors like mine, it's okay. You can mix colors. You could use any color that you have in your palette. Okay, there you go. So I have this new gamboge. I will add a little bit of French ultramarine here and a little bit of Paris Scarlet. I think that's too much. Okay. If you are using um, artist grade watercolor, okay, be careful because a little will, can go a long, long way. Okay, there you go. There you go. And I will add a little bit of French ultramarine here. There you go. All right, so these are the colors that I am going to use. Okay, I hope everyone is having a good weekend, start of the weekend. Here in the Philippines, it's Saturday morning. I know on the other side, it's Friday evening. Okay, so I will start wet on wet here on this part using the flat brush with the clean water that I have here. Okay, so that will be, this would be the first wash. Okay. I do not take my paper on the table because I cannot lift it and do in painting some like uh, uh like clouds like this or sky. I like to lift my paper so that it will or tilt my paper a bit so that it will drag the colors down and it will help the colors flow if i take my paper on my table i cannot do that so always use a drawing board if i use a loose sheet if you find our watercolor paper is expensive you can try this about Hong academy there's a student grade but it's still 100 percent cotton and 300 gsm so in painting wet on wet all right, what you, you should not be puddling. Let the water soak a little bit. All right, if it's shiny, it, it means that you need to let the water absorb first for like at least 30 minutes. If you could see that there are puddles, you could use your 
paper towel or towel to remove the excess water. Like what I'm doing right now, I can see there is a puddle of water. Do not let the do not let the water to like to be on top of the paper because if you do the paint will will be also on top and you won't like that. Let the water absorb first on your paper. There you go. I can still see there are so puddle of water, so I am brushing it off and removing the excess water. Okay. I can still see there is excess water here, so I am using my towel to remove it. Okay, there you go. All right. So I will be using the Taylor Blue okay. to paint the sky. There you go. I'm using the big round brush and you can brush from left to right. If you are painting watercolors, remember to drag the bead, okay? There we go. I am painting on the side there. This is a very, um, very a little watery. Okay, from tea to coffee consistency. I will just let the water flow. Okay, and I will tilt my paper a little bit. I will add some colors here. I will get a little bit of Taylor blue and add more colors on the top. And I tilt my paper a bit so I can let the what the colors flow going down. Okay, there you go. And that is how you let the watercolor work for you. All right. In watercolors, what you can what you are doing is you let you can let the watercolor do its own work by flowing. All right, there you go. So I put my paper down, okay, so it won't it will stop flowing, okay. And I will just let the colors Mm -hmm. or I will let it dry a little bit and once it is damp that is the time that I am going to start lifting my colors as of now what I'm doing is I am cleaning my brush okay okay Taylor blue is a staining color so after this session i will clean my brush thoroughly using master's brush cleaner for server to remove the excess and excess paint on my brush okay so if you see that it's drying you can use you, once your brush is dry you can remove the excess water using the paper towel or your towel beside you it should not your brush should not be watery but it's damp and you can lift your colors, lift the colors lightly like this, like that. And then I will, I, and then on the paper, on the mean towel, okay. I am lifting the colors here for the sky. You can also use tissue paper in lifting colors. I did that in one of my past live session that is the lighthouse if you want to check that you could go to the live ses live section of my of my youtube channel and you can see how i did lifting the colors using tissue paper so there you could lift the colors there all right there you go. So it can create some 
cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can also make, you can also shape, you can, well, you can also shape the lifting of the colors to make clouds the way you want to, as long as it is damp and not too wet because you cannot lift the colors or it won't create the clouds shape if you, if the paper is, if the paper is too wet. Okay, so there you go. There, so I will let the, I will let this dry. I will clean my brush again and okay now let's move on to the sand part so this part while this is drying we will move here so i will also do wet on wet on this part okay so i will be using the clean water here the clean jar okay great and let me see okay there you go we can see that okay there and I will paint, I will use the water to paint below. There is a line there, here from the boat. I will also avoid putting water on the boat here. Let me just remove some excess graphite there. Okay. I will, re I will avoid putting water on the boat. And make sure it will be up to here only onto the line. Okay. I'm working on the September calendar for the paint for the things that we can paint on September. So Watch out for the announcement that I will post on the community section of my YouTube channel and also on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is that is Bianca Santiago Watercolor and Calligraphy. Okay, so it should this part should be wet and but not too wet. All right. If it's too wet, especially if your if your if there is water puddling here, it can go to the ocean part, and we do not want that. Okay, be careful on this part. If you do not have a flat brush, you can also use a, you your big round brush for for the this kind of wash, like the clean water. Okay. There you go. All right. So I will get my yellow here. It's a little bit dark. So I will add a little bit of water. And I will paint starting here. Carefully on the carefully here avoiding the water part and the boat okay if your brush has a pointy tip that is very good because it will be easy for you to avoid the part that you should not put paint okay like that boat and the ocean, okay. There you go. You can add more yellow on some part. It's okay if the paint is not even, that is very good. There you go. I will add more a little bit more of paint here on this part. There. And 
here as well. All right, there you are. If you went out of the line, it's okay. What you can do is do clean your brush, remove the excess water, and if there are any hard edges, you can soften it. Like what I am doing right now. Okay. There you go. So this is the part of the sand. I am just softening the edges here. So it will have smooth transition. If there is any yellow part here on this side, it's okay. Because it can be covered a little bit with water, with blue of the water, and that's okay. So it will show that there is like sand below and water on top. That is what's supposed to happen. Okay, there you go. And watercolors are transparent, so it's okay to show some yellow below for the sand. All right, there you go. So there. I will let this part dry as well. And while it's drying, okay, I can prepare my paint. I have the French ultramarine here with me. All right. And I will add more of French ultramarine. There you go. I am just going to use the tea to coffee consistency for now for the first wash of the ocean. Okay. All right. I can see if there are any some hard edges okay happening here near the boat. So I am going to soften them using a damp clean brush. Okay. It happens, the hard edge it happens if though if there is a wet part of the area that that you can leave like it there. So it happens that when you put the paint, there would be hard edges. So there could soften it. There you go. All right, it's almost dry this part, so I can do the, I can do the ocean part. Okay, for this part, it will be dark here. So I use a light wash first and build the colors later on. Because in this part, I will do a dry brush technique also here. Okay, so I will wet this, the ocean part. Okay. And we will make sure that our horizon would be nice and defined. So we will define the horizon line later on. Okay, again, I will be avoiding the boat. Okay. Okay, it seems like I miss some part of drawing here. This part, one moment, I would get my pencil. It's still drying this part. I will draw some the missing part of my 
boat here. There is a missing part. Okay, there you go. I just noticed that. Okay. Good thing that I I haven't put water in this part yet. So there. It's complete now. <laughs> okay. Whew. All right. If that happens that you miss a part of drawing, what you can do is to let the water, or you put water on it, let the water dry first before you draw. Okay. So carefully, I am putting water on the ocean part, avoiding the boat, and avoiding also the upper part. Okay, there we go. Make sure when you do this wet on wet, make sure that it should not be puddling. Let the water absorb first by the paper for like um, 30 seconds to one minute. That's fine before you add your paint. We do not want to have the paint floating on top of your of your paper let the water observe first okay so if you don't have a big a flat brush like this you could use your big brush okay so i'm going to paint a light wash first of the french ultramarine of the sea here notice i am careful and dragging the watercolor bead there you go and i will add more of french ultramarine in this part because this is where dark area of the ocean. If you see something like this, it will create the hard edge. So I clean my brush, remove the excess water, and soften it. There you go. Also, this part. And here as well. Okay. There. All right. So this part, I will let it dry. Okay, let me soften this part so there you go so if we have a horizon line make sure to define it to so that on painting it will be easy to see where is the horizon line where it would be like the the eye level okay where you could see it all right there you go just removing the excess paint here or water i will add more of paint on this part i will get more of french ultramarine there you go and this time my brush is not too wet and the water and the consistency of my paint is a little bit thicker than earlier. I remove the excess paint using the towel here to create a dry brush technique. And that is what I am going to do here in this part. As of now, it doesn't happen that much because my paper here is still a little bit wet. 
Okay, but it's fine. You may also use some indigo on this area or Persian blue, whatever dark blue that you have. But then I will create now a horizon line using the tip of my brush. If you have a, a brush that is very pointy like this, it's very good. If not, you could use also a smaller brush like size two or zero whichever you're comfortable with as long as you can create thin line for your horizon okay i will also soften some part here of paint so it won't um, it won't create a very like it's like a hard or a thick line there so it should be so your horizon line should be a little bit soft but defined okay there you go All right, so this part is dry. I can do a dry brush technique here. This, there you go. So this part that can create like the loose, loose part that is on the water that has like shine of the water or small waves on the water. That's what I'm trying to do. I also use dry brush technique on the sand and I will do that later. So it will create texture on your watercolor paper that it is sand. Okay, there you go. All right, if you could see, it's, it creates texture now. All right, and also this part. Okay, there you go. Before the sand, I will paint first the boat. This time, I will be using a smaller brush that is size six. I'm going to use Palo Blue Green Shade here with okay very light consistency i need to coffee consistency first but this time okay here i won't i won't do this in a on a wet on wet technique but it's dry so i will start painting on this side on the left I paint first normally from left to right because I am right-handed. So I can avoid smudging the paper with my right hand. That's why. Mm -hmm. So if I paint on the right first before the left, I can smudge it by my hand. So I don't do that. So I'm very careful. There we go. For the boat, I will teach you how also to create like depth and like the curve on this part as well. But first, let's finish painting this part of the boat. You may add some dark colors here. Actually, dark colors and shadows can help you create depth and curves in your painting. If you watch my last tutorial, the macaroons, you can also see there how I created like the curves of the macaroons. 
on a paper. All right. You can also see that on my live section of my channel. So check it out. There. I will paint up to here only first. I will paint the dark part later. I will get more of halo blue and add more of color here. and some part here. There. So look into the, the reference photo and you can see there are some spot of blue. You can also always check the reference photo to see where are the dark areas. And that it's important in this painting to see where the dark areas so we can see also the curves okay of your boat in this case it would be this part so there all right now for for the dark areas, I will add, I will, I will create gray on, on, my, on my mixture. So I will use, I'd like to use this French ultramarine and I will add a new gamboge and a little bit of pyro scarlet. Just a little bit in it and too many. Okay. Let me get more of French ultramarine here. There you go. I like using limited palette because it helped me in, in color mixing. Okay, it's too yellowish, I think, so I will get more of French ultramarine this time. Okay, there you are. So I'd like to get some like gray. Okay, there you go. So it's now gray, a little bit of yellowish. Okay, there you go. I will also use this to paint the mountains at the back later on. Okay, so I have three here, but I will also make this with a little bit of the of the French ultramarine. I'm sorry, halo blue here. Okay, there you go. So this is the color that I have. And I will paint the part of the shadows of the boat here. If you do not like color mixing and if you would like to speed up the process on your painting, you can also paint using like indigo on this part or you can mix your own gray or dark blue if you like to. Okay, but I like mixing colors. My sand here is dry. And later on, I will show you how I can put also some texture on the sand. There. So I will just soften the edge here. All right. Then I will use also this thing to pick dark area here. Okay. 
I will also add more paint in this part. There you go. So it can create like an illusion that there, there, this part is inside and deep. There you go. All right, now let's paint the other parts of the boat. I will start painting the line here. Okay. You may also use a smaller brush if you'd like to. I will be using size two. And I will add the lines here. Carefully using the tip of your of my brush. I didn't paint the whole boat here, but I will do that later because that part is somehow darker. Okay, I will add more of the blue here. I will finish this one first. There you go. If you cannot see the curves on your painting, what you can do is to go back a little bit and look at your painting. Or you can also take a photo of your painting and then look at it on the picture than on the painting. And you would see that there would be there should, would be curves on this part. And it's amazing that you can create like a 3D effect curves on a flat paper. Okay, so carefully I am painting using the tip of my brush here on the line this part. And I would do it also on the next few lines. So these are the details already. Okay, there you go. If you cannot see some depth of your painting, what I suggest is to check your painting again to see where you need to add more dark colors. That's why in painting watercolors, it is advisable to do it light to dark because once it's dark, you cannot lighten it. And if you do wet on dry technique what happens is that it will be permanent on your paper you it will be difficult to remove the paint or you cannot remove the paint totally so i always like in start my painting using wet on wet technique because in wet on wet technique if you made a mistake and the paper is still wet you can still do some adjustments and edit your painting. There you go. I'm almost done here. There, I will add more of dark color here. To show some curves on the boat. I hope you can see them too because I can see it here. So, I 
and here as well. I rinse my brush and going to soften the edge here of my second layer. So there, we can create like depth on the painting. And okay, let's see what we are still missing. Okay, I will add more of mine here just to show the separation of the boat here. And in this part too. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to do the mountains here with wet on dry so i will be mixing or getting some colors here all right this gray okay since it's almost silhouette on the reference photo i will do the same so it's like take the coffee consistency using size six round brush it should not be too wet okay it enough wet and there should no there should no paint like dripping on your brush so i carefully paint the mountain here you can move your brush a little bit up and down all right there you go you can also Use different angles of your brush to paint the mountains. But as you can see, I am careful and, and careful on this part so that I cannot disturb the ocean area. All right. There you go. And the mountain is, on the reference photo is like a higher in this part. You could also do that. There you go. Almost done. There. All right. Okay. There. All right. So there you go. Now the last one that I am going to do would be the dry brush on the sand. By the way, this I still need to paint the, the division of the water and the, the sand here. I will use the gray here. I will add a little bit of yellow blue. So I'm just using the colors that I have in my water in my palette if you could, if you look at the reference photo you can see there is like division of the water of the water waves and the sand here and that's what I'm, I'm doing right now This is wet on dry. And 
Okay. And this part also. I'm going to soften the edge there and this part also. Somehow in the reference photo, there is like division of the water and of sand here. Okay. There. There you go. Let's just soften the edge of this part. Okay. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of, I think that's enough already for the, for the water. Now I'm going to do the sand here. So this would be a dry brush technique using my round brush and using the yellow I mixed earlier. Okay, so for this, dry brush technique it can create texture on your paper like what i did here i'm going to remove the excess paint on my brush using the towel and paint here so you should see like some texture on the sand that's why i like using dry brush technique on cold press paper so because it can create some texture like this. There you go. So we have sand. So it so your painting will not look flat if you just paint just yellow part here. Okay, there you go. All right. If you do not see any curves on your on your boat, what you can do is to add more paint here. Look into the reference photo and check on this part of the areas that are that are dark or has shadow add more shadows into it take a photo of your painting to see what what's still missing okay and for this tutorial this is done already i am going to remove the paper from my block Okay, if you are not using a block paper, then you can remove the tape from a loose sheet. Okay, so for block, there is like a part here that is open. I'm going to use the leaf blade. Okay, my painting is actually dry in most part. Yeah, it's already dry, so there. So using dry brush technique, I created like small waves here in this part and also stand here so there i'm going to remove the paper now and this is my finished painting i hope you like my tutorial today and i will post a schedule for september i am think thinking of painting some lemons um loose lilac also for september and those are what i'm going to those are some of the subjects that i would like to paint for september i hope you can join me in in the live session so this is my finished painting i hope you like this video and if you need to go back you can always do that i'm not going to delete this video on my youtube channel so everyone can re-watch this and you can go back to it if you need to again the reference photo and the outline for this drawing is on the description box i'll see you next time bye